Welcome to Indian Time. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me again. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to start off again with the, a couple of place names that I've left out from, from our last show. One of them, one of the name places is Chukhtupuminwe, uh, which is a place uh, right at Jaco Hollow. If you'll notice where the Jaco Hollow, there's two ridges that come together. That's what the uh, explanation means, Chukhtupuminwe, uh, the rocky cliffs on both sides there. And also, as you come further north, there's a place uh, that's called Hlkodle, uh, which is the um, up in the Valley Creek area, Valley Creek area where the two mountains come together in the valley at the end. That's ex explaining the area. So that place is called Hlkodle. So you got Chutpaminwe at Jaco Hollow and Hlkodle up in Valley Creek. Uh, one of the things I guess that I want to uh, do today is, uh, first of all, is to to wish uh, Louise Combs happy birthday. It's a little early. She's got a birthday coming up here this month on the 24th. And Louise uh, Lamousse uh, Combs will be 100 years old. And I understand that, oh, uh, Louise, I've, I've been to, I've done a lot of announcing <clears throat> at the powwows over the years at Arlie, and she, she's always one of the first people there, and she stays late. I mean, she loves to, and enjoys watching powwows. Uh, she loved, uh, she watched her grandchildren as they were growing up in school, in sports, and and we, as, as a culture committee, have been able to uh, talk with Louise over the years to get information, some of the information that she has. And we are very fortunate to have people like, like Louise who have lived long lives and have seen so many changes. Uh, they're able to talk about the changes and tell us about the changes that um, we'll be lucky if we were able to see those kind of changes. And she has, um, I guess, in, in, in a way, uh, been, in many different ways, has been very, very helpful to, to us as, as a culture committee, uh, as an elders committee, although she uh, is very seldom uh, or is part physically, we are still able to visit with her and talk to her on different information. So I'm sure that uh, she'll have a nice big birthday when it comes up here on the 24th of this month. So again, uh, happy birthday, Louise. And uh, I want to address Louise here. So, Kume <laughs> Aks <laughs> Okay, and some of the times again, I, I, we can't say enough about our elders like, like Louise, and we were fortunate enough to, to have uh, uh, Joe Ineas a while back, who also was 100 years old, 
and reach to be 100. And uh, we can only, some of us can only wish and hope and, and dream that someday we'll, we'll be uh, that age. So some of the things that uh, happened this month in October uh, that we have, again, uh, uh, on the 5th of uh, October, 1954, the Jesuits established a mission at uh, St. Ignatius. And I'll be talking a little bit about uh, the Jesuits and, and um, uh, the Catholic religion here in a bit. Also this month, we, uh, in, on the 15th, there was the, in 1932, I guess, it was uh, the first Christmas tree business on the reservation was established at Dayton. And that's been in the tree business for, for quite a few years. And uh, the thing I want to share with you, I guess, again, is uh, uh, we just had our elders meeting on the on Wednesday, or excuse me, on Monday, which was yesterday, because we had to we moved it up from from the regular scheduled meeting on the first Wednesday of every month because there's a an event happening down in Arlie this Wednesday, which is uh, tomorrow, uh, a rallying people to get registered to vote, and there'll be some entertainment. Uh, there'll be some speakers uh, down at the Arlie Powwow Grounds. It's going to start around, I imagine, around 9 o'clock and probably finish around 2, 3 o'clock. It's a, it's a pretty intense schedule, so if you want to be part of it and to hear some of the speakers, I suggest that uh, you get there fairly early and, and be ready because most of the people that are participating are on a very tight schedule. Also, uh, I'd like to mention again that on uh, next Wednesday will be our first uh, cultural workshop down at the Longhouse. It starts, uh, we'd like to start about 9, by 9.30, so if you can be there by, by 9, uh, we'll have uh, one break in the morning and one break in the afternoon. We'll try to finish up by 3.30 or 4 o'clock. And during the workshop, we'll cover uh, many different topics, uh, we'll, the language, the culture, and a lot of things that I think uh, we need to remind ourselves the importance, the values of, of, uh, of our culture and who we are. And hopefully that uh, uh, as many people uh, will show up this year as did last year. We, we had a, some good turnouts at our workshops and I hope that those that were there last year will come again because regardless uh, what we talk about and how many things we talk about it's going to take years and years for for us to cover everything and fortunate for uh, for it was I was very fortunate to to be born and, and, and raised by uh, traditional grandparents. So as I was growing up, I was learning and, and a lot of these things and, and know them today. <coughs> and <coughs> and uh, I know a lot of the tribal members are not as fortunate as some of, as some of us or, uh, for different reasons. And, but this is an opportunity for all of us to kind of remind ourselves and, and trying to learn a little bit more about who we are as, as Salish Pandare people. <clears throat> so I encourage uh, uh, programs to, to come in and, and join us in, on these, in this event. Also, uh, up and coming, uh, we'll be working with the Pres <clears throat> Preservation Office uh, and our elders. We're still working on the, uh, on the Clark Fork uh, settlement. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, how we're going to uh, mend the river. Uh, so there'll be a lot of work there that was coming up. And let's see. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit. I guess I, I mentioned the uh, the black robes and the Jesuits. And one of the stories that we got 
from uh, our elders. Uh, this one was from um, Blind Mose Chaute uh, back in 1975. Uh, and this is a, a story he told of a person called uh, a shining shirt, Hadlks, who uh, had a vision. As you know, a long time ago, a lot of our, our ancestors uh, was on a constant move, looking for food, trying to, trying to survive. And they went on summer hunts uh, to the east, east of the mountains to look for the buffalo. And, uh, and they would spend all summer there and then come back in a late fall or towards winter. On one of these uh, trips that the people were out there, uh, they had a, a battle with another tribe out there. They got into a, to a, a battle. And one of the people uh, was killed. There was a man that was killed there and left uh, a boy orphaned there, uh, this young boy who, who lost his father, uh, naturally was, was very sad and was crying and upset. And, and people took care of him throughout their hunting trip. And when they got back on this side of the mountains, he was walking around, he was still crying around, he was still missing his father. Uh, he was lost. And he was walking around and up in the mountains and looking, just, just trying to find some kind of uh, peace, I guess. And while, they were, while he was up there one time, uh, uh, this is where he had, he said he, it was a vision, I guess if you will, uh, a man came to him when he was there. And the man that came to him said, uh, knew all about him. He knew he was orphaned. He knew that the boy was hurt because, broken hearted because he lost his father. So this man said, I'm gonna take you to a special place. And the man took him up to to the mountain, to a, a certain mountain, top of a mountain, and then when they got there, he told the boy to stay there. He said, you stay here for several days. And so the man then left him. He left him up on a mountain, but uh, he was fed every day. The boy was fed every day with some, some of the finest foods that was available uh, that he's seen. And Finally, after several days, the man came back and, and told him, uh, I'm going to, he told me he was going to take him back to his people down, down below. When he got back down to the people, the, the man, getting close to there, the man told him, I'm going to give you something. And the man gave him a shirt and a rock. And the rock was, it was small and it was long and it was a special shape that had the, uh, a gold piece that sparkled in it. Uh, it was a very special rock. And uh, the boy was told that when you, when you grow up, uh, you'll always make a sweat house you, when you grow up. And uh, told him that he was going to be able to, to, to help his people to, in, in sickness, whatever, whatever they were, uh, whenever they were sick or hurt, that he would help them heal. And so, uh, also at the same time, he was given a song to sing when he was, when he was uh, healing people. He t the man told him that when, when, you're, when you heal people, sing this song, put your shirt on and use this rock and it will help you to, to do what you're, you're supposed to do. So when he uh, got to, uh, back close to camp, and then the, the guy disappeared. The, the old man that was talking to him disappeared. And, um, and before, well, before he left, he told him, well, this is your power, this is what you're, this is what you're gonna do in life, is to help your people uh, get well from sicknesses and diseases. And he said, when you pass away, when you die, 
uh, there will be seven rainbows that will appear and that will wind, the wind will blow and it will rain, it will hail and the people will see this and, and the thunder that, that they will hear and it will continue until after you're buried and then it will quit. So from that was his life from there on and from there on he was able to heal people, he was able to to, uh, uh, I guess, to be big help to the tribe. But also this, this man told him that uh, there'll be, there will be a time, uh, come a time when uh, men in long black robes will come to you and talk to you and teach you uh, so you will learn about the man above and the man below, which he was uh, not aware of at the time. And so after he visited, after the man told him all of this and all his life, uh, that was what his job was, was to take care of his people and to mend his people. And when he passed away, uh, it did happen, what the, what the man had told him, that uh, when he died, that it, the wind it blew and the thunder and rain and hail and the seven rainbows appeared and, and it stayed that way until after he was buried and then it disappeared. And so this person that we talk about, is, his name was uh, Shining Shirt or we call him Shining Khadl is his name. He had the power, he had the vision, he was given that to know uh, to, what to use, what kind of plans to use to, to um, heal people and all, at that same time he knew ahead of time, he was told that the black robes were going to be here. And with that we'll take a, a short break and I'll um, uh, talk a little more about the, the religion after the break. Where's, where's dinner? Well, I thought you'd be home a couple of hours ago, and what, I what, put what, everything away, what, so what I What is this? Pizza? What, a, a pizza? If you had just called me, I would have dinner, known what Dinner you... ready is a pizza. I didn't know you'd be so late. Let me ask you, you something. Is, is it I, uh, too much to have dinner let, ready when so I go home? Please don't be so loud. Don't tell me what to do! You shut up! I thought you'd be home I can get earlier. pizza! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do I, something I better. I'll, I'll fix you something, something now. better. Let go of me! Get in the kitchen! No! <laughs> wow, it hurts! Do you want to see what hurts? That's what hurts! That's what hurts! <laughs> now get up! And clean up this mess! Shut up! I'll be quiet, I'll be quiet. <laughs> For information, call 1-800-END-ABUSE. Welcome back. Remember, the two place names that I've given you today is the one, the first one was Chutpaminwe, Chutpaminwe, which means two, two ends of the, where the Rockies, two rocky points came together in the Jaco Hollow. And the other one is Lqoleh, which is up there in uh, Valley Creek. Um, speaking of Valley Creek, this is where um, Agnes uh, Vandenberg had uh, taught. She had a, a culture camp up there from uh, around 1974 to um, 1989 when she passed, or where she passed away. So uh, it's a very important uh, area, a lot of people learned uh, the language, culture, all the different things up in that area. I, uh, earlier I talked about Shining Shirt and his powers and his vision uh, about the black robes uh, arriving and the black robes teaching uh, the people about, about the powers of the a man above. I guess the past history of the the, the Catholic religion has 
has some good points and and has some bad points. And I mean, the Salish people had uh, attempted uh, several times sent delegations to St. Louis to bring uh, the black robes here after uh, envisioning the uh, and hearing about the the powers that the uh, prayers that the the black robes had. And then after several attempts, they finally succeeded in bringing um, the Jesuits to to this area. My understanding is uh, is that uh, some of the elders have talked about was that because of the the the, the sickness and because of the things that uh, the tribes always needed guidance and help on they 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 heard about the uh, the black robes and the Jesuits and that they wanted to to bring them here they wanted to add to what power the Indian people already had. And so they attempted to uh, several times until they finally succeeded in bringing the black robes here. But it was, uh, as it was told to me by some of the elders, uh, but the intent of the bringing the black robes here was to add to the powers and the religion that the, the people here already had, the traditional uh, religion and, and spiritual beliefs. They wanted to add to that. Uh, they figured that if this black robes, the black robes were, were as powerful as people say, that that would make our people even that much more powerful if they learned and had them here. And as time went on and, and the, the black robes did, did get here, uh, they did uh, a, a succeed in, in bringing them here. They they, they uh, then uh, found out that the first, uh, I guess the earlier uh, Jesuits or black robes, uh, what they're attempted to do was to replace uh, what was already here, the, the, spirit, the spirituality and the religion that the Indian people already had. They wanted to replace that with the Catholic uh, religion. And that's when some of the people um, uh, disagreed. Uh, they, uh, they were told, uh, uh, led to believe that the, the medicine uh, that they were practicing was, was evil and was not, was not right. And so the, uh, a lot of the medicine men and women at that time were convinced to take their medicine bundles and to bury them. They, they dug a hole in front of the church, as, as the story goes, and they were asked to put all of their medicine bundles in this. And when they did bring it, and not understanding a, a lot of what was happening, they buried a lot of the bundles there and they put a cross over it. They, and as time went on, the, a lot of the medicine men who uh, buried their bundles there uh, realized that they were, they were not able to help people, that the, when people started getting sick, and they started getting sick. So a lot of them went back and they snuck, under, snuck back and, and dug their bundles back out. And that, at that time, that's when the, the medicine men and women and their practices went underground. They started hiding um, and continued to practice because this was something that was part of their lives, that all of their lives, something that was given to them by the Creator also, and that for them to 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 do and to how to survive and to help people. So they took the a lot of the medicine took their bundles back and and practiced under cover. And that's when the, the, a lot of the uh, disagreements between the Catholic religion and the Indian religion, uh, traditional religion, came to be. And as time went on, uh, boarding schools uh, came. Uh, people were put into boarding schools. People were uh, 
uh, taken from homes and put in, in uh, boarding schools. Uh, there was a story that my grandmother told me, because I've always asked her why she never, you know, couldn't, never spoke any English. But she always told me that uh, uh, she was one of the, at that time, I guess we look at it now as very fortunate, I guess she was fortunate that when she was taken to the school, her father came after her and took her back out and uh, told her that she was not uh, going to go to that boarding school. So when she grew up, she maintained her, uh, her language and her culture. And I think a lot of that, uh, the, the hard feelings that we have that came about from the Jesuits and boarding school was because of the, a lot, at that time, a lot of the people lost their language, lost their culture because they were punished for, for, for that. And as time goes on and, and time went on, uh, that has all reversed now. We've all tried to, to retain and teach and give back, and we've worked together both uh, the culture and the, um, the traditional religion and the present day Catholic religion have worked hand in hand. You know, there's, uh, I know my grandmother went to, my grandparents went to church every Sunday and then went to, to sweat in, in the afternoons. So they, although they were combined, they, they, were kept, they were separate and they were, they believed and supported both of them. So there's a lot of things that, you know, is uh, religion uh, that we can talk about at another time. Uh, we're getting close to, to running out of time again. So uh, uh, next week we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Maybe we'll come back and discuss a little more about the religion. But right now I think uh, uh, the, the spirituality and the religion, I think we realize that we're going in the same direction now. So with that, I would like to thank you for joining me today, and I hope that uh, you join me again next week. Remember the words uh, that we had today, and uh, that's Shulqoleh and Chutpmenwe. Chutzchalchal pesiyapisn kuskeli hulemdemch.